Welcome fellow, fellow Rotarians, and uh, we want to welcome you to the third of the series of uh, webinars, our joint district webinars for 5690 and 5670. Uh, today we're happy to have with us uh, Mac uh, Teasley, Teasley, and Keith Hooper, and um, we're looking forward to their discussion on global grants. Both Mac and Keith are past district governors, and so uh, I will turn it over to them. And Mac, I think your name is actually Teasley, is it not? Teasley, but yeah. when I work on this, I, I sometimes go as Teasley, but it's uh, okay. Well, I apologize for the um, for the uh, error in that. I'm going to turn it over to Mac and let him. Let him do his thing. Okay. So let's see, Mac. Hang on one second, Mac. Let me get. You. Where are you here? A presenter. There you go. And you should be able to be a presenter here in just a second. Well, I think uh, I think I am. You should be there. You are. Okay. Good. Right. Hey, hey, Fred. Thank you so much. Um, and thanks for this opportunity to share about uh, experience with grants, global grants, district grants, uh, and how, in my opinion, that, that's really the way we can put the international and Rotary International in our, in our clubs and in our districts. And so we'll, I have a PowerPoint put together. I have 50 slides. It's not as cumbersome as it sounds. It goes pretty quickly. And I think it'll be, a, it'll lead to a lot of questions maybe. And, and Keith Hipper, my fellow past district governor from, from up here in 5670, originally from Smith Center, now in Topeka, he's the He's the president of the E-Club, and he uh, brings a wealth of uh, experience. He, he spends a good portion of every year over in the Philippines. He has a private foundation over there that does great work, and he's used rotary grants and so forth. And just recently, has one up in Evanston being approved, and uh, it's, look, it's, it's a huge grant. It's a $100,000 grant. You know, it's, ama it's amazing, and he'll talk about that experience, and, and that'll, that'll be a good way to, to highlight um, the, the challenges and the opportunities that, that we face as clubs in a district in getting that done and uh, not to be deterred, but it can be done and he's living proof of it. So, but let me start uh, with my little PowerPoint, if I can get this thing going pretty quickly. All right, can everybody see that? It's the the beautiful graphic that I actually stole from Fred about uh, Rotary Grants 101 using global grants and district grants to put the international in Rotary. I, I can't Mac, see it. Yeah, we're not seeing your. Um, do I need to do. This Let me see. Do I need to do. Uh, let me see. Share. There you go. Good to go. Yep. yep. Yes. Okay, and I can take myself off of the screen, can I, since I'm kind of going to be in the way? Or does that, if I Up close you. that, is that everybody going to be able, you still, if I do that, can you still see me? I we can, can see you. Okay. Mac, yes, we can just see. minimize your picture. Okay. All right. It's too late. I closed it. But, all right. Um, well, I do think that, you know, that our grants are truly an effective way uh, to put the international back in organization. And we've had that experience up here where we are. Um, I see three ways our districts and clubs can make this happen. We can write global grants. Now, those are the big time grants that $30,000 uh, worth of work. And uh, so it's not. It used to be in the old days matching grants. We could do five, six thousand, seven thousand, ten thousand dollar grants, but now global grants are thirty thousand. So it's it's got to be a very serious project, or you can be part of the funding of a global grant. You can piggyback on a global grant that. It goes on the over the building. Okay. Can everybody see this? All right. Or this is an intriguing thing too. I think you can use your district grant. For an international project, and you see those uh, chili peppers beside the things that that to me shows the it's like when you go to a Thai restaurant shows how hot the food is, hot and spicy. 
those tell me how difficult it is or what are the challenge that it is. You know, district grants are easy. Being part of the funding of a global grant is pretty easy. Writing your own grant or being a part of that is, going to, is more challenging. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't try, of course. And boy, do we have money. Our two districts are flush with district designated funds, DDF, and that's the money that uh, we have donated to the Rotary Foundation. And for this current year, which started 1 July, our balance was two, combined balance was $216,000. Now, in our district up north, it's 60,000. Yours has 155. So it's, you know, we've been spending ours uh, uh, a lot more than you have, and you're a bigger district too. But this bodes well for the future when, you know, in uh, 2019, 1 July, when we're the new 5680. There's no excuse for us not doing a lot in the international grant area because we, we are going to be flush with funds. In fact, if we took our $216,000 right now and we're doing the minimum amount of district grants, which is 15,000 our share because it matches with what, what is up at Rotary, it would, we could do 14 and a half global grants, which would keep us very, very, very busy. We, there's no way we could get that done in a year anyway. And, but the point being, our cup runneth over, you know, we've got, uh, it's running over with hearts and it's also running over with the rotary emblem, as you can see there. So we're, money is not the issue for District 5670 or 5690. So what are we going to do? Are you going to write a global grant, uh, big time, 30,000 plus? Are you going to want to be part of the funding of a, of a global grant that somebody else has shepherded and, and done? Or uh, do you want to use your district grant funds for an international project. One thing they all have in common is that they need to be in one of Rotary's areas of focus. And everybody, I think, has seen this before. It's got to be education, maternal and child health care, peace and conflict resolution, disease prevention, water and sanitation, or economic community development. If you can't put a project in one of these categories, one, you're not trying very hard or two, it's probably against the law, what you're doing. So just, uh, it's not a problem. And uh, Keith will tell you that you need to focus on, if you're doing a global grant, they want you to focus on one and not try to try to save the whole world by spreading your work across three or four different areas of focus. More about that later. Let's talk, we're gonna save the global grant discussion for the last because it is, it, we'll, we'll go in more detail about that, but Let's first talk about that partial funding of global grants. I don't know how aware you are of that, but our districts have both been doing that. This is looking at the last two or three years. Uh, your district, 5690, most of you uh, are in that district. You've done a couple of projects in India and Argentina and Brazil and Colombia. And you can see it's about $20,000 that you have contributed to existing, to the partial funding of existing uh, global grants that were written by clubs or districts in those target countries, India, Colombia, Argentina, and Brazil. So your club has taken that opportunity or your district has taken the opportunity to, and actually the $500 for that second one from the, from the top in India, that was the Gaiman, Oklahoma club that contributed $500 to this project in India, which was then matched 50 cents on the dollar. So the Gaiman contributed $750 to a project in India. So they participated in partial funding to the Gaiman Club. Our district has been a little more active. Uh, we've done about uh, $50,000 in, in partial funding, uh, 10,000 for the Smothers Milk Project. And we've done some in Brazil and Panama, Uganda and Mexico. And there are some interesting future possibilities um, our incoming district governor for next year in, in, uh, in, has a Russian connection um, and goes over there once or twice a year. And we've actually already been contacted by a club in Russia that he directed toward us for possibility of working together. So I think we can do some work there with them. Zimbabwe, we have a Rotarian who's joining the Pratt Rotary Club. He was in Concordia. He's moving, he's a minister, Methodist minister, moving down to Pratt. He's actually moving down to, maybe it's Greensburg, some, some town in the area, and he's going to be joining the, the Pratt Club, I believe. But he's from Zimbabwe, was a Rotarian, has 
friends over there in Rotary. And so I think there's a possibility that we could be doing something there. So we're, the future looks bright for getting us involved in piggybacking on global grants that other districts are doing. We have a very good friend in, in the Kansas City area, Jorge Cormac, and he's in the District 5710. He's a member of the Shawnee Rotary Club. He's a Guatemala na native, but in his civilian job, he's the executive director of the Woodland Public Charity in KCMO. It's a 501c3, and he, um, he has worked with all sorts of organizations, and he writes grants, and mostly in Central America, and uh, we have uh, had a great partnership with him and District 5710. And this Woodland Charity sponsors international volunteer trips to the area where the, the grant is going on, which is a really neat option for people. You can have members of your club. Uh, you could have your Rotaract Club, Interact Club, uh, non-Rotarians, whatever, travel down to to Guatemala, Panama, Ecuador, and now even Mexico, and work on a project for a real live hands-on service trip. It's a, it's a wonderful experience, and we've had several people do it. And every month uh, they, they have a trip, and they invite you know nurses, physicians, non-medical volunteers, Rotarians, and can you see the cost figures here? <clears throat> The on the ground cost is very minimal. It's um, 825 in Guatemala <clears throat> and only 950 in, in Panama, Mexico, or Ecuador. And you, you pay for your own airfare and you're gone for seven days. So for, and airfares are usually, depending on where you're going, $800, something like that. So for $1,700, um, you can go down there for a week. Meals and lodging are all paid for. and it's three or four days of actual service project, you're, you're putting beds together, you're installing water filters in, in, in villages, you're putting in cooking stoves, you're, doing, you're toiling in the, in, the, in the garden, you're teaching English to, to uh, kids in school, things like that. And it's, so it's, and then you, but it's not all work, you do have on, the, on the, the last day or so, you go back, you go to the next the big city where you're gonna catch your flight and you do the tourist thing for one day. So it's a good, a good mixture of you feel good after the three or four days of, of, of having worked hard for helping helping other people. And this is this is a list of the trips that um, that they have scheduled for the rest of this year and the first half of next year. And you can see there is literally a trip planned every month and some, a couple of months twice. And so you can. It's your schedule, and, and actually Jorge will schedule the trip. If you want to go at a time that's not there, he, he will work with you. If you have enough people to, to warrant a trip, he will even schedule a special one for you. And he goes down there on about, I think, every other trip. He, he flies down there himself and, and greets the group, maybe even more frequently than that. But it's a, it's a wonderful way. And the advantage is these countries, Guatemala, Panama, at least, are they're a three or four hour flight from Houston or, or Atlanta, Miami. And so you can be there very comfortably in a day. They're in the Eastern time zone. So you're not, you don't have jet lag. And the next day you can hit the ground running and be uh, working on your project. And so it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. But this doesn't mean we have to limit it to, to these countries. We can work with other countries. Got an opportunity if you have a connection in another country because you've been there on a mission trip yourself, or you know, in somewhere in Africa or South America or in Asia, more power to you. That would be great to go to. The Russell Interact Club. I went down there in 2016. I went to this medical clinic. This is a painting that they gave our district as a gift because of the donation to help build this clinic. This is what it looks like in real life. The high school senior from Abilene, Kansas, who's, who's there with his father. That's his father on the right in the photo. That's Jeff Ludy with the Abilene Rotary Club, originally from McPherson. And then he was there with the Russell Rotarians. Here they are with the water filters they put together, and they're about ready to go distribute in a village. 
So they, the Russell invites you to, hey, say, this is a great experience. They're going to do it next year again. I think they might go to Panama this time, but the kids love it. And it uh, really changes their life too. And this is, this is the scene. This is the scenery from, from the village they're working in. So if they get too tired of what they're doing, they can just do an about face and look out across the lake and, and see the beautiful vistas of where the, in, in its very rural part of, of Guatemala. And the Internet Club of West Wichita was just in Panama in March. And they went down there and uh, visited schools and did some other work too. So it's a great opportunity for our young people. So you can tie in this, the grants with an opportunity to visit the country that you're helping, which is which I think brings brings home what Rotary is all about. Now, district is something that our district has done a, a, a great job of, if I may be so bold in putting an international component in there. You know how district grants work each each year. The districts have the opportunity to take half of their DDF in a grant for district grants and then redisperse disperse those in their district as they see fit. So it's it's half of the allocation, which basically means it's a fourth of what was donated three years prior. It's half of a half. But anyway, it can it can range in our in our district. It probably ranges from fifteen thousand to thirty thousand if you've had a very very good year. So uh, in your district, it would be more because you've got fifty fifty percent more Rotarians who've been contributing. But the typical example of district grant projects are things you do in your own backyard. You know, you you build you, you put in a park bench, you do some playground equipment, you buy a defibrillator for for a, some location tools for a community garden, or you, maybe you buy some ebooks for a school, it's gone electronic. Um, but there's something that can be done involving international projects. What 5670 has done informally, I might add, in the, in the last, since we've been in this grant business, is we've earmarked tentatively, is the key word, a fourth or a third of our district grant allocation for international projects <clears throat> and these are either club initiated or district initiated. So if you had a 30,000 allocation, you know, 10,000 is reserved for, for international projects and so forth. Now, if there's a greater demand than expected from the clubs for the district grant funds, then the international stuff is put on, put on the back burner and, and, and isn't done or is done in a smaller to a smaller degree. But in your district, 56,790 and 56,70 hours, historically about half of the clubs are applying for these district grants. And so if we've got um, $20,000 to deal with up here, we might say, okay, um, we'll say that the grants are for $1,000 to the clubs. <clears throat> That's probably gonna cost $12,000. That leaves 8,000 for international. But if 13 clubs apply or 14, then we'll, we'll have 7,000 or 6,000, but we, we we will not deny a club the opportunity to, to apply for the grant uh, just so that we can have funds for an international project. Although we encourage and we help the clubs identify international projects that they can participate in. And this will give you a historic look at what our district has done from 2010 to the present in each of these years. This is the dollar amount there in that, that second column that we spent internationally. And in most cases, it was it was our district that, that was was doing the money. But in some cases, like with Ghana and Burma, Uganda, the Philippines, there were clubs that were doing that. Honduras. So it's really been. Uh, you can see that we've uh, in this last year, fifteen thousand. We, we had a very we had a major contribution to the foundation that, that three years prior. So we had a lot of money to work with. But <clears throat> it was a um, and we, we did a lot of overseas work, but you can see that it's an opportunity for the clubs to, to do things too. And what, the, what a club can do, for example, it costs $75 for one of these beds there in the upper left-hand corner, uh, $50 for a water filter, $150 for, for a stove to replace the old coal burning, charcoal burning stove where, which leads to, which isn't vented, leads to, Lung problems for the residents, and as well as burning danger for kids. But 
a club might want to write a district grant for $750 and buy uh, 10 beds or, or $500 and, and do, uh, you know, 10, 10 water filters or maybe $1,000 and do, and do uh, 10 of, uh, 20 of the filters. So things like that. And then they would have the opportunity as a club, they could say, hey, and we're going to go down and we're going to install those puppies. You know, we're going to construct those beds because that, that's what Rotarian visitors do. They put those beds together. They put the water filters together and they install the stoves. And so <clears throat> it's an opportunity for you to go down there and see what, what uh, your work has done, what your donation has done. And while you're there, you're going to do more than just that. You're going to be painting some walls. You're going to be hoeing in a garden. Maybe you're going to be teaching English to some kids in a grade school. Um, you'll be doing a variety of things. Uh, maybe giving worm, worm medicine to people in the, in the medical clinic, you know, things like all sorts of exciting things. And now we're going to Mac, talk about... Mac, can oh, I interrupt you a minute yeah. here on the district grant? Uh, our... our E-Club uh, requested uh, $1,500 in, in a district grant to buy four uh, gilts, uh, female pigs, uh, in the Philippines. And uh, th that's what happened was that uh, that was approved. We bought the four gilts. Uh, they were bred. Um, the Their offspring, there was an average of 10 piglets per per the four pigs. Uh, and so the $1,500 turned into about $7,000 that we were able to, to uh, you know, give to the folks. So um, it, it's, it's, it's a really, really good program if we use the district grants for those smaller things. Yeah, thank you, Keith. I think it's, um, and then people can travel. You've, you've taken people to the Philippines before, and we've taken lots of people to Panama and Guatemala, and you can see... You can see firsthand what is being done. And I know when we went to Panama three years ago, there were a group of us, uh, 20 of us from our district, and five of the clubs out west, Norton, Hoxie, Phillipsburg, and a couple other of the clubs had each chipped in $250, and they bought water filters. They bought uh, $1,500 worth of water filters. And then these Rotarians went down there and installed the nozzles on them, put them together, and handed them out to, in this remote village in Panama. And it was uh, it was a pretty amazing experience. And that was and those Rotarians are not the same as they were before. And they've seen firsthand what Rotary does overseas. So that's that's why I, that's why I think district grants are kind of a an unknown way that you can really have an international project if if the district decides that's how they want to allocate the funding, or if they promote it with the clubs because there are a lot of clubs that say, well, you know, we, we did the kiosk at the cemetery last year and we've, uh, you know, we've done that park bench and what are we going to do this year? And then if you say, hey, they need, they need water filters in this area or they need, uh, they need shoes for, for these kids in this area, I think Rotarians would say, yeah, that's, we'll, we'll kick in $300 and have the district match it or 500 or whatever. And even the smaller clubs can get behind something like that. And then they can, even if they can't make the trip down, they can be sent pictures of what their work did. And if they do a project, an international project every third or fourth or fifth year, you know, just, uh, I know the, the purpose of the district grants was to do stuff in quote, our own backyard. But I think in this, in this, the world today, our own backyard is much bigger. It's the, it's the international world too. So it's um, something to consider. There is a guide to global grants online. Um, it's it, you can all Google it. You can go to the website, uh, the Rotary website, and it's uh, 1,000 guide to global grants. And you probably want Ian at the end of it, which means you want it in English. You can get it in Portuguese if you want to. That's optional, or you know, or Chinese or whatever. But uh, you might want to. But it's 40 pages long, um, and we're going to go over that a little bit here. But it, that's what. I, some of this next information comes, but so if you're serious about exploring global grants, go go there and download that that grant handbook, and it's it's very helpful. Now, our district has had uh, four global grants uh, recently, from starting from 2011 to the present, 
and um, two in Guatemala, one in Panama, and and Keith Hooper just has one submitted, ready to be approved uh, to the Philippines. That's, and these dollar amounts over here in the right-hand column, you have to double that in order to see the actual amount of the grant. It's because this is the, it gets matched with with Rotary International. We have the $216,000 in our account here. Well, there's another $216,000 up in Evanston in an account with our name on it. So it's it's matched one to one. <clears throat> so we we actually have $432,000 available to us if we if we in theory want it. But this Philippine grant, for example, is a $100,000 project. So it's actually 101 or 102. It's even more than that. And Keys will talk about that, but. There are partnership requirements if you are going to write a global grant. Um, it's got to be two or more Rotary clubs or two or districts that work together. One is the host sponsor, and the other is the international sponsor. Now it's counterintuitive. You think, oh, international sponsor, those are the folks down in uh, Central America. No, that's us. The host sponsor is the partner in the community where the work is happening, where the project is being implemented, and the international sponsor would be us in Kansas in this case. In any event, all sponsors must meet global grant requirements and eligibility. Okay, so let's take a look at what these qualifications really are. Well, you have to attend a grant managed seminar and I think these have been put on at PETS sometimes or maybe there's been one, um, it, it's kind of an ad hoc thing. We did that for club presidents, president-elects at PETS one year. And the, the real purpose of the, these things is to, to impress upon the Rotarians the grant management. It's, it's, a, it's a fiduciary responsibility. You're going to be getting cash from Rotary that you're going to be managing. And so you, do, you complete a memorandum of understanding, an MOU, and it's an agreement between your club and the district, or the district signs an MOU too. And it outlines what the minimum requirements are. And it, uh, the, the club president and president elect signs it if it's a club MOU. And it, it uh, entails some of the following it's a three page document. It has the definition of what qualifi club qualification is and the responsibilities of the president and the president elect. You have to have a financial management plan, how you're going to uh, handle the money and spend the money. It outlines bank account requirements. You have to keep the funds separate from your normal Rotary Club account. You have to, and document retention. You need to keep all documentation, emails, applications, receipts for five year period after the end of the project for purposes of audit, auditing. And you need to have a policy on reporting the misuse of grant funds just in case something happens, you know, your, your club. Club treasurer goes to Tahiti or something like that with the grant funds. And it's signed by the club president and the, and the club president elect. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a generic document that, um, that you would see. And Keith, you chime in whenever you want to, but your, your global grant project must have long-term sustainable impact. That's, that's, what's, that's what's changed as far as Rotary is concerned. Back before we we had the Future Vision project when, when 100 clubs in the Rotary world, 100 districts, excuse me, became Future Vision pilot programs, and our district was one of them. Uh, you had something called matching grants, which could be $3,000 or probably be even less than that. And, and Rotary was getting nickel and dime. They had, they had 20,000 grants to review and approve every year, and they just, the staff was getting behind her and behind her. As they say, and so they uh, they changed it to global grants. They want this to be a thirty thousand dollar project as a minimum, and it needs to have sustainability. Um, and and the community itself has to identify the need. You don't tell them they need a water well; they tell you they need a water well. You know, and then the idea that bottom bullet is you're strengthening the community's capacity to meet its own needs. You're you're teaching them to fish. You know, this, you know, the old parable. And the grant has a life cycle, and this is this is uh, in that handbook as well. And I've, uh, since you can't read this, I've focused in on like the application phase, and this is what 
this is Keith, what you have just gone through, you might want to talk about these steps, the application, the staff review, and so forth. I'm still here. I, I um, for a global grant. Um, Can you see my the, slide, Keith? Or the the most important thing is that there has to be a relationship between the host club and the international club, and you have to really have a lot of confidence in the host club because. In, in, in this emerging nation that we have, uh, there, a lot of clubs are just looking to get money, you know, and so, and, and then once the grant is approved, they tend to use the money as they think it should be, it should be used and not the way the grant is. So the, the relationship has to be solid. And in, in my case, the relationship is solid simply because I spend six months in the Philippines and I talk to the people that uh, that are actually working with me on these grants, but uh, but that's the that's one of the most important things because they tend uh, because of the uh, the situation, and I'm sure it's the same in Uganda or wherever that they might have a, a better reason to use their money for something else instead of the grant, and then we run into problems at the end when we do the reporting. So. Uh, uh, so to, to me, that's that's the important thing. <clears throat> I have the opportunity to actually sit down with the the host club and 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 the non-governmental organization that will be helping us. We sit down and we work this thing out, and they understand that what their their responsibilities are, and 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 the club's responsibilities, and my responsibilities. So. I, I feel very confident, you know, that the grants that I've submitted, that uh, that they know that that I'm I'm the one who's going to provide the oversight, and and I, I would suggest that if if we put if we do a global grant, let's say in 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 Ecuador or 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 Panama or wherever, that we we are assured that these people are are are, are committed. To do the things that we say that we're going to be committed to, um, and uh, uh, but I I'm I have the opportunity to provide the oversight. So you know I go there um, every I'll go in November and then January through through March uh, or April, and I can sit down with them and say, okay, uh, this this is you know this this is what we're supposed to be doing. What are you doing with these grants and uh, and typically that that's the way it should work and i would strongly recommend that if we do a gro global grant uh the club that you're working with or the district you're working with is solid um and and you might even have to go there uh and, and you can write that into the global grant uh, for uh, you know transportation to to wherever um to actually uh, oversee these projects and uh, if it's a one-year grant that's fine if it's two or three years someone needs to go down there i think every um, uh, periodically to make sure that uh, they're using the money uh, that that we actually uh, pointed out in the grant uh, and it will be used as it's supposed to be used and keith your recent experience you you submit the but well, your grant number is uh this is 1600 so you've been working on this for a couple of years is that right i have been working on this for almost two and a half years and i i this is something that i think um i think that it's uh um how do i say this we've got we have high school graduates who are extremely smart that don't have the opportunity to go on to additional schooling. And I found this uh, organization called, uh, uh, it's a, reg it's a uh, um, um, uh, engineering technology degree that they get. Uh, and and, and the, the, the parents have to make less than 120,000 pesos a year, which is uh, around uh, seven or $800 a year. 
um, and uh, uh, I've been working with, with these folks, um, and, and we spent a lot of time uh, in, in three different areas uh, in the Philippines. One is an island called Howe Island, extremely, extremely poor. One is in a, uh, a uh, uh, municipal area, uh, which is called uh, Look Mandawi, which they're extremely poor, lots of out of school youth, lots of trouble, lots of drugs. And then my own area that I work in, which is Talakag, uh, Bukidnon, and they are extremely poor. And uh, um, we've been working with them for a year to come online and say, yes, we want to support this program. So, it, I mean, it's not just like it used to be where I write, wrote a grant for a million meals to come to Manila uh, and it was approved. Uh, sustainability is, is the most, most important thing because Rotary wants to know if this project is sustainable. And, and so we've worked on that uh, with the three of us, uh, the, 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 the president of the school, myself and the Cebu North Rotary Club, we've, we've sat down and we've, we, we've hashed this out uh, to make sure that it's, it's sustainable because if it's not, Rotary will not approve it. Yeah, that's, that's their, that's, that's the big thing that has changed. They, they don't want you to dig a water well and then go away feeling happy about yourself and then the well breaks down 12 months later and then what happens? You know, you've got to train people to repair the well, to maintain the well. And we, we used to, we wrote matching grants bringing dehydrated food to, to a, some people. I'm not so sure that would be approved anymore. They want, to, they want the people to you know, you teach them how to you know, bring them garden tools and fertilizer and some training, you know, and that sort of thing. It's like they want these things, they want the people to be able to support themselves when this is all over. And, and it, it has to be, the project needs to be working five years later. Now that was the, five years was kind of the magic number. But I think, um, Matt? You know, yes? Okay, this is Dave Abbott with the uh, 5690. Uh, yes. I just had to make sure that I understood because I've done several of global grants. The money actually will come to the international partner, not the host club, correct? It, it depends. When we've done grants with Panama, it has gone to the host country, that is Panama because they're, they're, they've got a track record, they're reliable. In fact, I think that's what, it, in theory, the money is supposed to go to, to the host country. I think that comes. Well, um, because when I went through the water with Peru and the mm -hmm. water project there, the, the Rotary International sent me the money mm -hmm. and all of the work that was done in Peru had to be documented then they sent me the invoices and i paid the bills and i think they do that on a case-by-case -case basis probably based on track record and what the what this project is and how warm and fuzzy they feel about it and and so forth and i keith you you get the money for your panama for your philippine project don't you um that that's a very good question because um uh past grants that I've done under the matching grant program, um, I wanted to keep, uh, and, and not a one-year program, but a three-year program, uh, I wanted to keep the money and I wanted to do the accounting and that sort of thing. But uh, now that I have great confidence in the club that I'm working with uh, and, and the fact that I can provide oversight, when I, when I come down there, I look at the books. Uh, and, and so this time, the money goes will go to that uh, that Rotary Club, um, but uh, that, that's a very good question because uh, sometimes the folks that are in the club think that they need the money somewhere else, <laughs> and 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 then we have a real issue. Well, you know, and and I got an email four hours ago from Rotary International. I was copied on it, informing. The David Panama Rotary Club that they that they were being wired thirty thousand dollars for their project that was approved of which we 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 sponsored a, 
a third of it, actually more than that, two thirds of it, 20,000 of the 30,000 was from us. But the money went directly to the David Club because they've got a track record and they, you know, they, they have, they've, they've proven themselves that they're fiscally responsible. So, and I think that's, uh, but I, I can see in many cases, if you're sending it to somewhere in, in you know, the real third world, uh, as opposed to the second world, you know, maybe that's going to be more of an issue. Or if it's, or if it's a disaster to Haiti, you probably wouldn't send money to Haiti after the hurricane. You know, maybe that would be maintained by the club just because of the chaos going on on the ground. But Dave, that's a great, that's a great observation. But it's, but I think there's a later slide here that in the in that manual that I was make, referencing the global grants manual, it it says that the that the host club gets the money. So I don't, uh, but I know obviously. You've got firsthand experience to show that wasn't always the case, and I think uh, if there's a good reason for it not to happen, that's well. I I've been through uh, 14 of these, and the first 13 was the host money host company host club got the money direct, mm -hmm. but then when we switched to the new process, the global they, grant, they sent me they sent the money to me. Now, if if they've updated the since that was about three years ago that went that I did that. So that's interesting. Yeah, we well we'll need to but Keith, you your money is going to the Philippines directly, is that right? That's correct. And I, I, I think you have the option. Uh if if you're not really, really convinced that the club or the district is going to use the money as it was uh, destined for, then you have the option of, uh, uh, of asking for the money, especially if it's a one or two or three year program uh, coming directly to you, and then you can do what you said. I think that's still an option. And if you look, I've got the slide on the screen now about the reporting phase of this. This is what happens at the end, and, and actually, 12 months after the project is approved, you need the first report. And every 12 months thereafter, and then a final report within two months of the project's completion. And boy, do not be delinquent with your reports. I've got some firsthand experience with that, it's, although it was from probably 15 years ago, but my fellow district governors and my, my class from our zone, we had the opportunity to do, do a big project in Vietnam, and that was when we were first, Rotary was first getting involved in Vietnam, and that was exciting. And so, and I volunteered to be the uh, the, the head honcho. All the all my you know six or eight of my classmates, their districts put money in, and our, my district did. But then the reports never came uh, from Vietnam, and they didn't come, and they didn't come, and so. My name was on, on the, and our district was on the line. So there was one year where our district could not write any grants because this report was outstanding. It was delinquent. Our zone director went over there. He was a, he was a crusty old retired lieutenant colonel. He used to fly helicopters in Vietnam. So he went over there. On a, he was going there anyway for Rotary, and he took care of the situation. And and pretty soon we got we got uh, we got receipts for the thing and I was able to close it out but it can uh, that's the if you're piggybacking on an existing global grant that somebody else is doing then you don't have that issue you can maybe contribute 5000 or 10000 in district designated funds or $500 in cash as the Gaiman Oklahoma Club and you're not um, you're not on the hook for worrying about the reporting to be done that's that's the that's a re, the report the the grant writers issue so that's uh, just a word to the wise there. Starting this last, this 1st of July 2018, there now has to be a community assessment to going in with your global grant application to show that uh, they do really need what you're proposing to do. And the community assessment can use, there are six various tools down here at the bottom of the page. and. Um, you know, you can have a community meeting, you can do the interview process on the ground there in the, the host country, do a survey, have a focus group, uh, asset inventory or community mapping. And, and Keith, I know in the Philippines, you were talking about how some of this information is readily available because the, the, the country or the, or the state um, 
has this information about the community. They've done the community mapping. They know the poverty rate and so forth. Is that is that correct? That's correct. So that's what. So you didn't have to do it this time because your your grant was submitted before one July, but you would have had to put this report together, this community assessment together otherwise. And so it's it has to go in with your grant application. So it's um, and you can uh, and I think you can. I'm trying to think whether you can use district grant money to go down there and do the grant assessment. I'm uh, I don't I'm not so sure about that. But, uh, because you're not supposed to district grant shouldn't be used for a global grant, but you can certainly write it into the global grant amount. But then you've got to have it up front, so maybe maybe district grant funds can be used for it. But in any event, there's one more check on sustainability that Rotary International is now uh, rightfully demanding because it, hey, it's it's all of our money that's being spent down there, and they want to make sure that it's being spent properly. So if you're thinking about applying for a global grant and your club is qualified, uh, be sure that your project meets, you know, it's benefiting the community. It's going to be led by Rotary members down there in the host country. <clears throat> it's going to have some measurable results and it's going to have an impact that's going to continue after the thing is over. It's, it's sustainable and you know, Rotary is all about sustainability. The community needs to be able to support themselves after this grant funding ends. Now the host host sponsor, this is the overseas country in our case, they initiate the project in theory, although it can be based on our, you know, we've been down there, we know those people, we've been there on a mission trip with our church or who, who knows what, or maybe we know a fellow Rotarian, we met somebody at, at the Rotary International Convention, you know, in, in, in Canada, and then we, we talked with a guy from Jamaica and we want to go down there, okay, but you, the host sponsor also conducts the community assessment and they manage the and implement the project and then implement the budget too. And they provide the local assistance. And, and number five, they receive the project funds. Now this is right out of the manual. Now, Dave, I, I'm, I think as Keith said, it, it could be if you have good reason not to have them get the money, uh, Rotary, Rotary will listen to that. The international sponsor, that's us in Kansas in this case, we provide the financial assistance, some technical support, maybe if they're doing something uh, that requires some good agriculture background or water well experience or other guidance. And we perform tasks that can be done remotely. And also, this last half of that uh, second paragraph, participating in service uh, during site visits. You know, we can, we can help install the thing, uh, monitor it, help carry it out. So that's um, a lot of potential there. And both sponsors, so the international and the host, both have to be qualified to participate. You can't, you can't have a project with a district or a club that's not qualified, that doesn't have the qualification MOU signed and sealed and, and on file. You've got to work, both work on developing a project plan and have a Two committees that uh, can collaborate together and and also they encourage you to partner with other cooperating agencies whenever possible other NGOs that might be in the country there, there could be the, the Department of Health in that country or maybe there's a, some kind of an orphanage association or a heart to heart uh, in Kansas City and there, uh, there could be a Habitat for Humanity or you know things like that that uh, NGOs Cooperating with them is encouraged too, and they can they can uh, donate in kind support. When you go online, the application tool at the Rotary Foundation is pretty neat. You you call up, you know, we're starting we're starting a global grant. This step one comes up, basic information. Okay, what's your club? Who you are? What's your Rotary member number? Blah blah blah. One of the committee members, both the your the committee in your club or your district, and also the committee members in Panama or in the Philippines or in, in Zimbabwe. And then the project overview, that's the, the executive summary. And and they'll tell you you've got 200 characters to do this or 200 words and so forth. So, and Keith, you've just been through this process. So it's pretty nifty and you can skip, you can, maybe you don't know how you're gonna measure success quite yet. So you skip number five and, and but you know the location of dates and you can go back and do number five you know, next week uh, or whatever, when you have when you have the information. So, Keith, do you have any comments on 
Well, I think the most important thing is that uh, when you go online and you apply for a grant, the first thing they ask you is, uh, you know, who are the uh, who are the primary contacts in in your club or your district, and then who are who's the host committee, and and they will uh, and you have to put those in, and then they have what they call a project overview, and and that's uh, you know you can put as much as you want to but it should be very concise as it says tell us a little bit about your project what are the main objectives of your project and who will benefit from them so if when you write that and you submit that then you're you get a grant number and then that becomes um that's where you will continue to um uh, add to the grant as to you know all the other stuff that you're supposed to put in it says and then the the areas of focus um uh i would i would limit that to two because if you do more than two or three or more than three or four or five they're saying that uh, this is a, a too broad a scope Air, focus it into uh, uh one or two areas so the latest grant that we wrote, we we wrote it into basic liter education and literacy and economic and community development. These are the two areas which I think we're going to need uh, uh, the uh, community assessment or the uh, poverty mapping or whatever for the communities that you're working in. Um, but uh, um, then you have to, if, if you add more than one or two, uh, you have to go through each area of focus and say, you know, what goals will you have when you're talking about basic education and literacy? What goals will you have for community uh, development? So uh, uh, the, the, the fewer that you have, the, 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 less, the less that you have to write uh, as to explain these things. But uh, um, you know, beyond that, I mean, it's uh, uh, it's about a this grant was about a 16 page grant uh, that once we got done, um, once you get on the website, um, it goes through each question and you don't really get to see what your answers are until the end. But uh, um, it's uh, they. Rotary really wants to make sure that we know what the heck we're doing uh, with this thing. I mean, it wasn't like before where you could say, send 1.5 million meals to uh, uh, to Manila to take care of the poor and they would approve it. And now, I mean, you know, there's uh, there's a bunch of things we have to write. So um, uh, I, my, my, my only uh, comment is that uh, uh, if, if you meet somebody at the international convention that wants to partner with you, uh, you really need to uh, find out for sure whether this guy is or this club is legitimate. Um, and that might even take a trip uh, for one of your club members or, or district members to go over there and sit down with him and say, yes, you know, this is really a, a really important project. We had the blessing of a guy by the name of Dr. Bill Grimes, who, who spent part of his life in Panama, uh, and and he was down there and he he understood uh, the people. And we've had some great relationships with the David uh, Rotary uh, uh, Club down there, and and in the Philippines we've had great relationships because I spent half my life over there. But but you. You got to know that these guys are are not just looking for money; they're they're looking for a way to improve uh, the livelihood of their people. So, you know that I have spoken. Yeah, Keith, and, and so the first three, step one, two, and three, you do that, and then you send it in, and then you are you're given a a, a grant number, and then the real work begins in terms of fleshing it out. I mean, that's exactly right. Project overview is, I mean, they can stop you right there and say, hey, eh, this is, you know, it's too broad or or that's unreasonable, it's not realistic or something like that. But, and then you've, 
anytime you do submit one of these um, grants for review at Rotary International, usually you hear back and they have questions and they're, the last time I did it, the, the questions just came and came and came and either I wasn't answering them properly or they were, you know, it seemed like uh, you answered it and then they, a few times later they would ask the same question again, but but they were they were very serious about um, wanting to know about the budget, you know, where, where's this money coming from and, and participants and measuring success. How are you going to measure success just because, well, the, the clinic hasn't burned down or, you know, or what, you know, are you going to have surveys or, or there's going to be an increase in participation at the clinic or, or whatever. And then just the sustainability thing is where, what they really focus on too. And then it's finalized and submitted, but it has to be, it is approved. If a club initiates it, it still needs the approval of your district's uh, governor and the foundation chair. So it's, you know, there is a, uh, it does go through the district. The club just can't go off on their own because the club is actually, the club is spending funds that the district has. The district has a and, whole. And Mac, Mac, this is on both ends. Uh, not only the the district here but the 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 district in in whatever country you're you're working with mm -hmm. yep so it's but it's but if it's not to be deterred from from doing it and it's just but it's it's not an easy process but it's a very doable process and it's it happens you know a thousand times a year rotary rotarians get this done but it's got to be a, a serious project that can be measured and sustained. So, so back in, yes. ideally, the the host club is the one who is supposed to write the grant. Yeah, uh, and then the international club, you know, our 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 focus is providing the money for the grant, but uh, um, sometimes it's 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 really difficult for. Uh, I mean, if you go to Nigeria and the host club probably won't be able to write the grant so you've got to sit down with them and sit and say what what do you really want i mean what are we looking at here yeah, yeah i think that's i think that's true if, if it's if, an, if it's an experienced area if it's maybe if it's a second world country instead of third world i don't you know i don't know if that's a fair distinction but the david panama club writes they probably write a, one or two global grants a year They've had a lot of experience, and they get they get contributions. They get financial support from Germany and Norway and Kansas, and, and, and you know they've developed relationships over the years. And then they have people that visit and visit the projects and so forth. But they can be depended upon to write a a solid grant that will get get through the approval process. And so that's you're right. The host country in an ideal world, and according to the manual. Should be the one that writes the grant because they are they're on the ground. They know how it's going to be measured. They know how it's going to be successful. They know how it's going to be sustained and how the nurses are going to be trained. You know, for in, in three or four years to keep up the work and that sort of thing. So, um, but they sometimes will need our help, and that's a Rotarian can uh, make that trip down there and develop that relationship. And, but why don't you try to give your clubs? some international flavor, like by writing a global grant or donating toward an existing global grant when you hear about them. And we're going to make a, 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 an effort to share that information in our new district on 1 July of 2019. Those are, that information will be more widely distributed and also opportunities for your district grant to become an international grant from something overseas. So put the international back in Rotary International. All right. Do we have some questions and comments? Mac, another comment is that uh, um, we used to have these wonderful, uh, what did they call them, the, the teams that went over and and then we'd, we would uh, host a team. Uh, that's kind of by the wayside now, but we actually have uh, the ability on a global grant to uh put together a, a committee that would go, go over and help them on a specific problem uh the other thing are peace fellows we have uh, an opportunity i think to do a global grant on on a peace fellow so you know that's uh those are a couple things that we can do 
that don't really require us to uh, you know, put money into a water well or, or, or whatever. Uh, the other thing is that once the global grant is approved, uh, then each club or each district can, can take money from their DDF and put it against that grant to uh, expand it. I, it's more, more individual Rotarians that will do that. But, uh, uh, you know, that's a real opportunity to, uh, instead of putting it to uh, just the Rotary Foundation, uh, what they can do is they can identify a, a specific grant where they want to put their money. And that, that really helps in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Uh, this is Dave Abbott again. Can okay. you hear me? Yes. Yes. I, could you send me, because you have my email, the name and contact information for that Zimbabwe individual? Because the Andover Club is trying to write, write a grant for the croc for a crocodile farm in Zimbabwe, and they're having trouble connecting to a host club. Oh, okay. Okay. And then the the other little thing you you show the information on our our interact club that goes down to Panama and the great work they did. The other little thing that doesn't show up on any global grants, district grants, or anything is the uh, right program, the Rotary International Teachers Exchange that uh, where we send teachers down there in the fall and then they come back. We, we send teachers down there during the summer and during the January, February, uh, Argentina and Panama send teachers back to us. Now that's, that's, a, that's a great program. And didn't Armida Height begin that program? Yep. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's a fantastic partnership that you've got going with, yeah. with Panama and yeah. And Ralph, Ralph is not doing too well, so yeah. she is not as active as she was. Yeah, I I understand that. That's yeah, my goodness. Well, but yeah, you're right, and that doesn't uh, <clears throat> that is truly one of the the great exchanges that that you have that uh, and it makes a difference in both countries. If you can imagine this, the, the Spanish teachers from from the Wichita area, or even if it's, if it's beyond Wichita, they go down there and, and are totally immersed in the Spanish speaking and when they, they come back a better teacher and vice versa. So, and fantastic. But I'll send, you the, I'll send you the gentleman's name from Zimbabwe. Thank you. He's, um, I think he's getting ready to join the Pratt Club. So that'll be, he's, he's a, he's a, seems like I've, I've met him in person. Um, he was at our district. In Salina. Are right. there any other questions? But before I we have end, a comment. Um, um, since I spend uh, three fourths of my life in the Philippines, I, you know, I was a former Peace Corps volunteer over there in in the '60s, and I married a beautiful lady, and we've had just had our 50th wedding anniversary. But uh, I have a separate foundation over there. And if anyone is interested in coming and seeing the work that we do in the Philippines, uh, my, my, my promise is if you if you uh, buy a ticket to Manila, and I I keep uh, uh, getting Mac and Inga to do this, uh, I take care of all the expenses as you come and work in the work that we do in the Philippines. So uh, the invitation is always open, and uh, and Mac I think is going to come next year, right? Yeah, that's you were going to get that business class ticket for me, and then I was going <laughs> to come stay two weeks. Then, yeah, yeah. Right. I know, I, I know, I have an open invitation, Keith, and and, there you I, go. and the people that have gone have have been blown away by how how beautiful it is and how friendly the people are and and the great work that's being done. So, but I, I don't want to have to milk any pigs or anything like that. So I'm not I'm not a farm boy. <laughs> Actually, quick question, if you don't mind. You bet. So I'm working on a small project in Haiti at the moment, and it's looking like as it stands, it'll be sustainable. So when you go to International to apply for a grant, will they take prior work like that into consideration that, hey, there's already a model for sustainability? You know, of course, what you have to do with the, with the new grant funds has to be sustainable, but do they take things like that in consideration? Yes, I'm sure they would. Now they're not. To, 
and then you're, you're not saying that you want to retroactively pay for something you're saying, but that's a track record that they would have. Is that what you're saying? If I can, if we can pull this off, yeah, there'd be a prior track record. I mean, and perhaps I might just need to do some reading on my own, but figured I'd ask. How, how yes, much I, is the grant for? But we haven't applied yet. Um, so well, it's just right now with uh, Wichita Rotary um, and Global Faith in Action. They're a nonprofit in Wichita. We're just putting a water system in. It's to provide clean water for the school and uh, community center that our club is involved in. And we're going to be able to sell the water and actually provide clean water to folks. And we're selling it at a price point that is many fractions below what they normally pay. Um, they're going to pay uh, three gourds less for 132 ounces of water or a gallon versus what they'd normally pay for a 12 ounce bottle. Um, and so I learned about the global grants thought, well, heck, if we can get this rolling and, and already be selling water and helping the community through that. And the idea behind selling it, you know, is just so that we're accruing funds to keep maintaining the system, you know. So have you thought about a district grant? I mean, we're talking, you know, seven or eight thousand um, dollars. I have no idea what how much the total grant would cost, but uh, the district grant might be an option. Okay, neat. Um, actually, if you don't mind, because I don't want to take everyone's time, can I just reach out to you outside of the call? Sure. Yeah, by all means. You, sir. And, and if you have a, if there's a, sounds like there's an NGO that would be available to help uh, fund it, and that, and Rotary likes that too. If you have a, a third party match, and but yeah, as, as Keith said, the district district grant would be a possibility if if if. Unless you know, if it doesn't have to be a thirty thousand dollar project, if it can be, if, if a few thousand dollars will help, you know, that's that's the kind of thing that could be proposed and proved at the district level, and it's it's very easy, very quick to do. Great, thank you. All right, Fred. Anything okay. Else? No, I think uh, I think that sounds like all the questions. Uh, let me go ahead and turn my computer around so that uh, there we go um mac and keith i want to thank both of you for your time and your preparation and for your experience on all of this i would encourage anybody who's still on online with us that if you do have questions uh please reach out to mac i have his email address in the slides that will be distributed and uh, I'm sure he can then uh, direct that question to either Keith or to other resources he might have. We also are sending out uh, the Global Grant uh, workbook or the guide and, and both the workbook, the guide, excuse me, the guide as well as the slides are sent out to uh, the two distribution points for each of the two corresponding uh, districts. So you should have those either today or tomorrow, or at least in the next couple of days. Um, also on the slides are some resources for you. I would encourage you to make sure that you reach out to not only the governor, governor-elect, governor nominee, your trainers and so forth, but remember that we have assistant or area governors, we have past presidents, we have a lot of Rotarians in our districts who are um, very much experts in what we're doing. So please consider uh, reaching out to them as well. Finally, I, well not finally, but I do want to again thank Mac and Keith for their their work on this. Um, as you can tell, the global grants are something that uh, take a little bit of time, but it's a very worthwhile enterprise. So again, Matt, Keith, thank you very much. Special thank goes out to Sue Pierce, who uh, provides us with the access to the GoToMeeting platform. So I know she's not online, but thank you, Sue. And finally, thank you to all of you club and district leaders uh, for attending this. We had 19 people connected today. I hope it was useful. Give us any feedback you might have, um, and we'll be happy to, to try to um, improve as we go along. This will be, or this has been recorded, so we will send this um, 
we will send the recordings or, or house the recordings. We're looking at where to do that even as we speak. So with that, thank you everyone and have a good evening and hope to see you at a future Rotary event. Bye now. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye Keith. Hey, love you, Mac. You too. Right back at you, brother. All right. Go Royals. All right. Okay. And I hope you came away last night with the in the positive. Follow. Go Royals. I'm a Yankees fan. Had I known you were such a deep Royals fan, I would have cut you off. Oh. <laughs> oh. Thank you, everyone. Hey, right. what, when's the uh, district conference? Um. October. Got a calendar here. Got October 19, 19 and 20. October what? 19 and 20. 18, 19, and 20? Oh, 1920. Okay, and uh, that's in Russell, right? In Russell. Okay. That's correct. Got it. Got it. Right. I'm going to make my resume. <laughs> okay. Mac, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. It was okay. okay. Thanks for the opportunity. All right. Talk, talk to you again. Okay, you bet. Thanks. I'm going to end this. Okay. Here.